What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we escaped from the pantry after, well, quite a bit of thought, arguably a little bit too much thought, and a little bit too much time, but nevertheless, we found that an Amidex gate has been opened, and if I recall correctly, this is Dio this time around, and so we're going to see how our characters deal with that this time. Ambidex game, Toshio no shimekiri made, nokori 45分 desu. 45 minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. The gate's been opened? One of the other teams must have done it. But the rest of us aren't even back yet. Well, we can fix that. Come on, let's get moving. Just then. Whoa! Did you two just get back? Yes, we did, but... Then the team that opened the AB gate must have been the ones who went through the blue door. That would be Luna, Fai, and Dio. Huh? Wait. You guys went through the green door, didn't you? Then why the heck did you come out of the blue one? There's an explanation for that, I promise. Also, where's Quark? Just tell me, have any of you seen Quark? That's the question. Quark? No, we haven't seen him. Did something happen? He's gone. Gone? On the other side of the green door, we found a room called the Treatment Center. We found our key cards and left, but on our way out, he just disappeared. So you went through the blue door to see if he'd gone in there? No, that's not it. Look at this map. So they went there, and then which one was the treatment center? That was the treatment center. They went out this way. And it looks like... Wow, so there are actually a couple different places they could have stopped along the way. Hmm. So that's not good. <laughs> Ooh. So you go through the green door and the treatment center, and eventually you end up at the blue door. It looks like there's a pretty big room in the middle there. What is it? A warehouse similar to the one on floor A. In any event, we've spent some time searching, but have been unable to locate Quark. Huh. Well, maybe he went back to the other floor already. That is a possibility. I will return and see. I'm going back through the blue door. Figure I'll take a look at the area Luna and her team were searching. I'll come with you then. We've got a better chance at finding him with two pairs of eyes. Right, thanks. Sorry about all this. I guess there's nothing for it. And it's also worth noting that this is Temyoji trusting us in the timeline where we betrayed Luna, right? We saw in one of the other timelines that Temyoji would not disclose where Quark ended up because we had betrayed Luna, or Luna in the, you know, Ambidex game that had taken place just prior. And so in this timeline, I guess maybe it's the, you know, dire setting, but Tenyoji's actually trusting us to come along with him. I guess nobody's really died yet, right? <laughs> I'll help look for him. Me too. Then we'll leave floor A to you guys. Right. You know, to be honest, it's, it's kind of funny coming back to the beginning of the game. I really actually missed Alice. As much crap as I gave her in the very beginning of this Let's Play, I did miss having her in the dynamic. And her voice acting is pretty solid too, and so it's nice and interesting to hear her, I guess, I guess, involved in the action again. Let's go. Come on, Clover. Right behind you. Temyoji and I headed through the blue door while Alice, Clover, and Kay climbed into the elevator. Hmm. So where is this? The P.E.C. Have we been here before? That doesn't sound familiar. No, we haven't. 
Wow, so yet again, another new room. This is through the blue door. What is this place? Looks like a bunch of hazmat suits, probably for protection against viral or chemical agents. So these things keep you from getting sick? Yep, that's the idea. We should ask Luna's group about him. They investigated this room first. Hey, there's another room underneath. Let's have a look then. I wonder, are we actually going to find Quark this time? He was gone for so long in the other timelines. Darn. He's not here. Oh, Quark. Where the heck did you go? I should have kept a closer eye on him if I'd just been watching. Temyoji's face was drawn, and the knuckles of his fists were white. He was an old man, but until then I hadn't realized how old. Suddenly he looked very, very tired. Don't worry about it. I'm sure we'll find him. Come on, let's go try somewhere else. I put a gentle hand on his shoulder and guided him toward the exit. Sorry, this is a total non sequitur, but I was just thinking, when we learned about Kay's background, we thought that the old woman was likely the woman used in that research, right? There was a man who was researching something with, um, you know, altered genetics, and Kay was potentially a product of that, right? A robot intended to, or quote robot, I don't really know 100%, but something robot-like that was intended to carry on the old man's research. And the old woman was there because she was, she had to die for whatever the purpose of the research was. I'm wondering if that death in this game is the intended death or not, right? Is this game part of that research? And if so, is that death something that was almost guaranteed by creating this research? The researcher knew that if they were going to create the notary game to conduct that research, the old woman would certainly die at the hands of someone. And that's, and yet she still participated because it was necessary for this person to, I guess, part, this other person to participate in the nonary game. And the cost of that would be the woman's life. I, we don't have enough details to really flesh that out, but it's just something that struck me. And I guess part of that is also because Knowing that Temyoji was so disheartened by the death of the old woman, it makes me think that Temyoji might actually be the researcher. But from what I just said earlier, it makes it sound like the researcher would have been the person to construct the nonary game for the research purposes, and if so, that would make the researcher zero. And I'm not exactly convinced that Temyoji is zero at this point. But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really not sure. Maybe part of the research is testing a particular, like, I guess, people from different time periods with potentially different genetics, some altered, some unaltered, in, in, in a controlled environment, insulated from the rest of the world, where some people have been exposed to the virus, or they've all been exposed to the virus, and seeing how each of them is impacted by it. I don't know. But we'll see, I guess, right? <laughs> I put a gentle hand on his shoulder and guided him toward the exit. So that's a new room we have to explore still. So this is the Floor B warehouse, huh? It looks just like the other one. It's pretty close, I'll give you that. Couple differences, though. Have a look over there. The doors are... shining? No way! Are these chromatic doors? Yeah, seems like it. They've got a box... or see over here? They've got a box next to them, just like the ones next to the other doors. I guess they're all white doors this time. We should go tell the... 
No, first we look for Quark. But, yeah, I mean, you've got plenty of time to handle the chromatic doors. There are more urgent matters, right? First Quark, and then the AB game. Look, I don't think he's here. What do you say we head back to floor A for now? Maybe somebody else has already found him. Alright. Let's go. Hmm. I'm also reminded, I'm wondering how Quark could have been moved in other areas, <clears throat> or in other places, potentially against his will, in ways that defy the rules as we understand them. And I'm trying to think of how the woman got inside that AB room. Right? The woman's dead body. Why was that the case in one of the timelines, but not in all the others? How did she get there? How did, presumably, Dio... Or Alice, no, presumably Dio, go through the Gollum Bay door before it was unlocked later on. We don't really know a lot of that yet, do we? Hmm. Dio? Oh, it's just you. I'm guessing you haven't found Quark. I ran into Clover and, where, and Alice in the warehouse up on floor A. They told me about Quark and how you're all looking for him. So he hasn't come back to the warehouse? Nope. Maybe he just went off to ruminate on a solution to this game. Chewing his, his cud, so to speak? I don't think I've ever heard that before. What? Well, that's what ruminants do, isn't it? Hey! This is no time for jokes. You should be out there looking for him, too. Uh... Why would I do that? Sounds so boring. Aren't you worried about him? Why the heck would I be worried about some kid I've never even seen before? What? I mean, even if that's how you feel, it's incredibly insensitive to say that in front of Temyoji. For all I know, he's Zero Senior. <laughs> he could be hiding in some swank little cubbyhole, swirling a glass of brandy and gloating. Now that's an image. Look at all those fools running around. Wahahaha. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, there's. What? There's no way? Are you sure? Nobody knows what Zero looks like. He could totally be a kid. I warned you, Temyoji. I told you it was a bad idea to just swallow everything that little Baka told you. I trust Quark. <laughs> Suit yourself. Just don't come crying to me when it bites you. The air grew thick with tension, but before their tempers managed to set it alight, Phi burst into the room. Sigma! Sigma! Good, you've got Temyoji and Dio with you. We found something. Come on, all of you! Ooh. Did something happen? Just, you'll understand when you get there, alright? Now come on! Uh, where are we going? The crew quarters. This is exciting. Oh, is it a bomb? Are we going to find the bomb in this timeline now? Because it was in our original route, but it wasn't in many... Th it hasn't been in many timelines since then. Also, when did somebody find this? While looking out for Quark, I guess? Did they establish who activated the AB game? It was in Crew Quarter Room 1, wasn't it? What? Already? What? Luna and Alice are both dead? Are you kidding me? Well, this is not good. But it already happened. These things happen so much later. Later on. No. What in the world? Is 
Your heart stops, your bracelet comes off. There was a roaring in my ears, breathing, heartbeat, but my footsteps sounded muffled, as if I was hearing them through layers of cotton. I pressed a shaking hand to Alice's neck. Her skin was still warm, but the only pulse I felt was my own. Luna was the same. Huh. They're... they're dead. Both of them. I don't remember, has the old woman been discovered in this timeline at this point? I think she has. So there is the possibility that Clover found the handkerchief, or that Alice found the handkerchief and then died. Well, but would then Clover have noticed Alice's death and then deduced that it was Luna and then killed Luna all in the past, like, however many minutes? Highly unlikely, right? What's the explanation here? It doesn't have to be the same mechanism as the other timelines. It could just be that this is a constant of this timeline. That Luna and Alice die. Here I am, literally just minutes ago, talking about how it's nice to have Alice in the conversation again. But they're, they're dead. Both of them. By then, everyone had arrived, cramming themselves into the small cabin. Nobody spoke. Silence filled the room, flowing into my ears and throat like cold, brackish water. A chill shuddered its way through my body. I stood there, frozen, staring at them. I'd seen a corpse before, when we discovered the old woman. Alright, that confirms that, but this was different. The old woman had always been dead, at least to me, but Alice and Luna I had known. They'd been living, breathing people less than an hour ago. Reality settled around my shoulders like a thick lead blanket, and my chest felt suddenly hollow. Who? Who found them? My throat felt dry as I spoke. It was a full minute before someone answered. Clover, I think. When Kay and I ran over, she was just kind of standing there next to the bodies. It was pretty clear they were both dead. So presumably, Clover didn't kill them? If she was standing there in shock at the bodies? She could obviously be acting that, but... I mean, Dio is unaccounted for from the warehouse coming to find us, right? Kay and Fi were together? Quark is still on the loose. It's possible they tried to kill each other. Or one of them killed themselves, or both of them killed themselves, though unlikely, right? I think Clover killed them. Me? Kill them? You got into a fight with Alice after the AB game, didn't you? It looked like you two knew each other before you ended up here, so maybe you were trying to get her killed. Honestly, I mean, I, don't, I really don't think this is likely. None of us had any connection to her, which means you're the most likely to have a motive for murder. It's easy to see why she would have killed Luna, too. She probably caught you offing Alice, so you did her in, too, so she wouldn't rat you out. Huh. Where did Luna go... We don't know what happened with Luna afterwards, right? So we exited the room with Alice and Clover, and then Temyoji and Kay came out of the other room looking for Quark, which leaves Phi, Dio, and Luna in the warehouse, presumably. And I think Dio activated the AV game at that point, right? So... What could have happened from there? We sent Alice and Clover to the warehouse while... And that was with Kay as well, actually. So Kay, Alice, and Clover went to the warehouse. And then Temyoji and myself, Sigma, went to explore elsewhere. And then after that, we ran into Dio. So really, any time in between there, we don't know what Luna and Phi, K, Dio, etc. did. And we have no idea where Quark went, right? 
Stop it, Dio. The AB game is emotive too. What do you mean? Once someone's dead, they can't vote anymore. That means they'll automatically ally. If your opponent's guaranteed to ally, then that's an easy three points. Who was Luna's opponent? That was Dio, right? Yeah, Fai and Dio. Then that would mean Dio had a motive as well. Although, to be honest, I mean, part of the reason why they chose Luna to go with them is because she was almost a guaranteed ally, right? Hmm. Yep. Alice saw him killing Luna, so he had to shut her up. Why the heck would I do something like that? No, it's just a taste of your own medicine, Dio. Pay attention next time. You do it to get an advantage in the next round of the AB game. <laughs> what kind of cold-hearted baka kills a lady for a few points? I'm more interested in Alice's condition than in her killer's motives. Yeah, I'm really curious to see if we're gonna find the weapon here. I am as well. What do you mean by her condition? Her clothes are barely disturbed. If it weren't for the knife, okay, note the knife, and uh, blood, she would look as if she was sleeping. Yeah, you're right. Which make I guess that leads me to think there wasn't much of a quarrel beforehand. She was probably blindsided. Well, maybe she was just killed while she was sleeping. If she wanted to take a nap, why sit on the floor when there's a bed nearby? That is a little strange. But a better question is, would she really be sleeping right now anyway? Hardly seems like a time for a nap. She was probably put to sleep then. What? How? Oh, come on. How did Zero Senior knock all of us out? Oh. Yeah, that white gas. So you're suggesting that Zero Senior knocked them out with the white gas, then killed them both? Yeah. However it happened, one of the people in this room did it. Not necessarily true, can't 100% rule out Quark. Well, maybe not one of the people in this room. I forgot about somebody, didn't I? Are you talking about Quark? He disappears and then suddenly there's a murder? I don't know about you, but that seems pretty suspicious to me. That's crazy. Quark couldn't have done this. Alright, then why did he disappear? There must have been some kind of accident. Then I might have it backwards. If he wasn't the murderer, maybe he was one of the murdered. That would explain his sudden disappearance, right? You baka! Dio, knock it off! That's going too far. Whoa, whoa, calm down there, big guy. Don't tell me it never crossed your mind. I just said what you were all thinking. I mean, I guess it is worth noting, it could be Phi, right? I never really throw Phi in these considerations because she's really earned my, my trust as, I don't know, a good person in this game. Somebody who's actively trying to figure everything out, and she feels like an ally. But it's a very real possibility that, that she's not our ally, that she's Zero Senior. It's also possible, now that I think about it, Kay is experiencing amnesia, right? And 
Zero Senior could participate in the Nonary game with the promise that it wouldn't be obvious that they were Zero Senior if they wiped their own memories, right? So if they don't remember anything from beforehand, they don't remember that they are Zero Senior, they'll play through the game as intended, potentially even be their own research data, right? And then eventually figure out that they are Zero and then be able to play the rest of the game accordingly or learn from the game after finishing it and realizing they are Zero Senior. So, I know everybody, well, maybe not everybody, but I know Phi had a little bit of a memory loss, and then K obviously has amnesia too. So that's a possibility for sure. Hmm. Yeah, because even when thinking about how Temyoji could be Zero Senior and be that researcher who knows the old woman, K could be, well, unknowingly carrying on the research necessary um, to investigate whatever it was that old guy was looking into. And the Nonary game could be the vehicle of looking into that. So many possibilities, really tough to narrow it down at the moment, especially in the context of so many of these other mysteries, but just kind of, just kind of putting ideas out there. Anyways, they only have 10 minutes until the AB, the AB game closes, which is obviously not very good. All players, please enter your votes. If no vote is recorded before the deadline, any non-voting parties will automatically ally. Alright, time to head for the AB rooms, guys. Come on, we've got more important things to worry about. Oh, so you're going to, ab going to abstain, huh? That's some good luck for you, Clover. Sigma was paired with Alice. Sadly, it looks like she won't be able to vote during this round. If Sigma abstains, then you'll have no one voting against you. Hey, come on, cheer up! Dio, you're being such a jerk. This is your chance to escape. Escape? That's right. Right now, your BP is at 6. Sigma's saying he won't vote, so if you choose Betray... Clover would get 3 points, bringing her to 9. Whoa, hold on there. I didn't say anything about not voting. Oh, so you are going to vote? Well, you are, right? How exciting. Sigma should have 6 BP just like Clover. That means this next round is a one-on-one -on -one fight. If one of them can trick the other one, they'll have enough BP to get out of here. Can't wait to see who wins. <laughs> Oh, this is definitely getting interesting. Right, we should get to the Floor A warehouse, guys. Come on. Yeah, how are we gonna approach this? There's that blood. I can't unsee it as blood now. Hey, Clover, can you choose Ally? We'll be stuck at six points if we both choose Betray. But if we both cooperate, we'll get two points, and then we'll have eight. That means it'll be pretty easy for us to get nine in the next round. It's just that both of you chose Betray in the last round, too, right? Clover? Yeah? I said I want you to choose Ally. Okay. You'll choose Ally too, right? Of course. She gave me a strange sort of absent nod and turned to shuffle into the closest AB room. I wasn't sure if she'd actually understood me, but given the effect that Alice's death was having on her, I didn't think there was much else I could have done. And it is worth noting that this reaction by Clover to Alice's death how dramatic it is, how much it impacts her, unless it's really good acting, it seems to be conserved across multiple timelines, right? 
it makes me think she really isn't the one to have killed Alice in this situation. And if she's really just reacting to Alice's death for the first time, it makes me think she didn't kill Luna this time around, too. So there's a different mechanism of murder in this timeline. At least contrary to the most likely theory from that previous timeline. Where where we thought Clover killed Luna and then Dio came in, took the knife out of Alice, and then attacked Hemioji and Clover, you know, that, that whole ordeal. So it's potentially entirely separate. But if Dio still killed the old woman, like in that other timeline, then he probably did it with the knife. Did Alice find the knife? While they were in the warehouse? And then on the way down? Or while they were looking for Quark? Or while they were meeting up with us? Or something like that? She killed herself? Like she did in that other timeline when infected with Radical Six? I don't think so. Was she killed by Dio, who still had the knife, or who reclaimed the knife in the warehouse before everyone else was able to find it? I don't know. We don't know that certain things are conserved across timelines. I was preparing to enter an AB room of my own when I heard Fi's voice at my elbow and turned. Sigma, Sigma we need to talk. Oh, hey, Fi. Something up? How are you planning to vote? I was just talking to Clover about that. We're planning to both vote ally. Yeah, I thought so. Huh? Listen to me, Sigma. Because Luna is... Well, because Luna's not voting in this round, her vote will default to ally. Her opponent is Dio and me. That means we're pretty much guaranteed to have 9 BP by the end of this round. You and Dio are going to choose Betray? Luna's only got 1 BP left. But she's not wearing her bracelet anymore. You saw that, right? That means it won't do anything if her BP goes negative. Well, it's not like it can make her any deader anyway. You have to betray Clover. If you can get to 9 BP, then I'll take you with us. Wait. You mean you're planning to escape? Of course. If you don't come with us, you're going to be stuck here for the rest of your life. Why? If you just wait until everyone's got 9 BP, I can't do that. You really think Dio's going to stick around once he's got enough points to split? I guess this provides a really good motive for Luna's murder, right? Dio having betrayed the first round, knowing he has 6 points, and that killing Luna ensures that he'll be able to escape the following round? That's one heck of a motive, right? <laughs> And now, it totally changes our game. If Fi and Dio are both on board to escape the next turn, then... Well, that changes our game completely. If we choose ally, even if we successfully ally, we're, we're still die, right? If we choose betray and Clover chooses betray, we stay and die. If we choose betray and Clover chooses ally, then, um... Well... That's the only thing that can get us out and keep us alive. All other three potential options, the other Betray option, and both ally options, lead to death, essentially. So, now that we have this promise that the game is going to end next turn, or after this AB game regardless, yeah, we have to choose Betray, don't we? Hmm. I don't like it. You gotta make a choice here. The number 9 door is only going to open once. If you pick Ally and Clover does too, then you only have 8 points. 
I promise you Dio is going to make a break for it as soon as he can. If you want to have any chance of getting out, you need those three points. Now. I guess the other question is, does K have the option to get nine points this time? I think he does, right? It was K, Quark, and Temyoji. I don't remember if which was a pair and which was a solo, but I'm pretty sure K has six points too. Very interesting. Because I was thinking K might be one of the few people able to stop Dio and Phi. But if K is down to leave as well, that changes too. So if I want to get out, I have to betray Clover? Right. Why are you telling me this? How do I know you didn't just tell Clover the same thing? Talk to Clover? I'd have about as much luck talking to a potato right now. Oof, that's, that's kind of rough. But... It is also worth noting Clover's in the exact same situation, right? Where if she chooses to betray, she could potentially get out. So I wouldn't be surprised if we're stuck left behind with Clover here. The truth is, I want you to come with me. Oh? Tsundere? Why? I just know that you're important. Somehow. You just know, huh? Interesting. This is actually really interesting. Why are we important somehow? How does she know it, right? I mean, it's clearly related to the morphogenetic field and, and all that jazz. But in what way are we important? Hmm. Probably as some sort of research subject, right? Did you tell Kay? He's got six points right now too, you know. No, I haven't talked to him. He's playing against Temyoji. Temyoji's only got one point left. So if he chooses ally, he's going to get penalized. Exactly. And I don't know if Kay would do that. Well, depends. Some timelines he has, some timelines I think he'd have a tough time doing so, right? But anyways, we only have one minute. It's almost time. Remember what I said. You have to choose Betray. She looked me in the eye until I nodded, then turned and jogged to her door. Hmm. Well, alright. Into the AB room we go. I feel awful for it, but but I do think Betray is the way to go. Is Clover really going to choose Ally? If she does, then all I have to do is choose Betray, and I'm out of here. No, I promised I'd choose Ally, so that's what I'm going to do. But Dio is almost certainly going to have 9 BP after this round. If he gets out, I'm going to be stuck here forever. So yeah, that's what it comes down to, right? Fi said they're going to choose Betray, and so it really comes down to, I pick Ally if I think that even if D Dio and Fi get 9 points, they're going to be stopped somehow. How would that happen? Either Temyoji, if Temyo if K gets 9 BP, K is not going to stop them, um, and Temyoji will be dead and unable to stop them. I don't have faith that Quark would be able to stop them, or that Clover would. If K does not have 9 BP, K could stop them, and Temyoji would be alive to assist as well. But even then, stopping both Phi and Dio, I think K could do it, but I don't know if I would bet my life on it, right? Because that's essentially what I'm doing in this AB game. So as sad as it is to break a promise, I think, I think Betray still makes the most sense here. Knowing that Phi and Dio are going to get 9 points here. If I were in this situation, if Phi and Dio for some reason pick Ally, what happens in that situation? Well, I mean, we get to 9 points, potentially K does too, and we have the opportunity to leave or stay if we're the only person at 9 BP and can prevent K from leaving himself, right? So I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know. And I can't see any motive for Fi and Dio to pick Ally. 
It's not like they're able to scout some sort of behavior from us by trying to get us to pick Betray when they choose Ally. I really don't think so. So I think we're gonna have to go with Betray here. Nine, eight, seven, darn it. What the heck am I supposed to do? Three, two, one. We're gonna pick Betray. We're gonna pick Betray here. I think this is the first time I'm encountering a vote for the first time where I pick Betray. Round two of the Ambidex game has been completed. And it's really because there's no way for both Clover and myself to survive. And so I have to go with the only route that allows for my survival. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Of course, the little bit of the dilemma is if Clover and I had somehow decided ahead of time who was going to survive, uh, we would have at least one of us survive. But now there's a good chance that both of us don't survive. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex Gate's now opening. But honestly, like... If this is... I don't know, I don't know what to say, right? If we get 9 BP here, and Fi and Dio also get 9 BP, what kind of an ending does that lead to? Does it end when we go through the the 9 door? Do we learn something beyond the 9 door? Right? Like, I don't, I don't really know where the game would progress in this timeline. Would it say it was essentially a game over or a bad end because everybody else died? Does something else bad happen because nobody else? Or does something bad happen to Sigma, Phi, and Dio because they threaten to leave? I don't really know, right? What would the implications of this be? How else could this timeline progress? What more could we learn if we step outside the Nine Door? The only thing I can think of is if the gameplay continues beyond the Nine Door and we learn a little bit about what's beyond it. And then can maybe use that in other timelines to get a better ending where everybody makes through the nine door? I don't know. But as usual, of course, I'm going to say that we'll find that out in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Definitely some twists and turns, right? We're learning a lot about how in different timelines, people are getting killed in different ways and potentially by different people. And it's really difficult to figure out what information we can learn in one timeline and apply to others, right? What information is conserved and is gonna allow us to thus change our actions um, to, to have better results. So we're definitely having a tough time figuring that out, but you know, bit by bit, I think we're figuring things out and getting closer to, I mean, even if it's just speculation, figuring out what's going on in general, right? There's so many mysteries, but anyways, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next episode just as much as I am. But until the next episode, it's Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.